Sean picked out two matches, and uh, we agreed to watch them. These aren't the most um, – there's not a lot to talk about on the matches themselves. Oh, I can talk for a while. Well, Fear I know not. you can. I know you can, but especially the Funk and Flair match, uh, a great match, just not a lot of uh, – not a lot of highs and lows, you know what I'm saying? Well, allow me then. Which I one do you want to wanna, start with? I want to start with the Shield match yes. with the Wyatt family because uh, I watched it first, and uh, and there there's there's a few things that I have to mention. So before we get started on that, let me set the stage a little bit. Yes. So this was WWE Elimination 2014. On the pre-show, this guy by the name of Cody Rhodes. And Goldust faced Ryb Axel, Ryback and Curtis Axel, Rhodes one with the crossroads on Axel. This is only nine years ago. It is. It is amazing that you think nine years, because when you watch it, it feels very modern. Mm-hmm. Whereas you know when I started watching, uh, when I, I actually when I was didn't start, but like compared to when I started, if you watch like 1998 WCW. And you go back eight years to 1990 WWF. It's like it's a different universe. Everything has changed. Whereas if you watch this, it's not that different. Granted, you know, Luke Harper's passed away and Bray Wyatt's passed away. But if you you actually watch the match, it's very similar to a great match that you would see nowadays. It's the exact same style. But you know what I noticed first off? No. I'm going to tell you. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I watch this show nowadays every week. I think Sean does too. Mm-hmm. Some people don't. A little delayed sometimes, but some yeah, people, I, I get to it. Some people have quit. And it's much better. And when you tell people it's much better, some of them don't want to hear about it. Even if they don't actually watch it, they'll still argue with you, even though you watch it and they don't. And uh, I turned on this match, and within the first... Like 30 fucking seconds. I almost threw up. Because, dude, the fucking zooming and the cutting. (laughs) Like, they still do it a little bit nowadays, but it's a thousand times better now. A thousand times better. This fucking match starts, and I don't remember who was in the corner, because I actually couldn't see him because I was dizzy. (laughs) But... Someone's in the corner and they're throwing punches, and this fucking camera's like, zhoo, zhoo, and it's cutting and it's zooming in and out, and I'm like, oh Jesus, God Almighty, like, it was so horrible. So anyway, this was this was like, you got it. If you think it's shit nowadays, number one, watch it, and then after you've watched it for a while, go back and watch it before, and it'll really fucking hit you like a baseball bat to the face. This fucking I... zooming was so horrible in this match. It was it made the match almost fucking unwatchable. And now, nowadays, they've drastically cut the amount of horrific zooming that they do. And it was patently obvious watching this match. I It caught me off guard because I didn't think they had started that, and but... Maybe no, they started. It, they started in 2008 when they went to HD. Because they were all worried that when they went to HD, people were going to see, see air. So they started yeah. all this shit, which actually made it even. It's like, you know, what the point of going from standard definition to high definition is. You know what the point is, so that you can see it better. Right. So then your plan is to make me not be able to fucking see it because you're going to zoom and cut and shit. Fuck me. So anyway, that was that. That jumped out. And then there's Roman, who's virtually unchanged. Mm -hmm. He worked exactly the same. True. He looked practically exactly the same. There's Seth Rollins, who, aside from having like a streak of blonde in his hair, he looked exactly the same. But his half and half. Yeah, I mean, he was he was like their aerial guy, and he doesn't do that. He does some of that stuff, but not... Not to this degree. Not to that level. No. He, he, was doing yeah, he did a lot more flying back then. But in general, it's like it's the same Seth Rollins, except he has the never broken back then. This was Seth Black. And then fucking Dean Ambrose. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I w- you, you know, like, if he, if he did something really horrific, you should sit him in a room and make him watch his matches from back in the day. Wow. Because it's like... This guy, God, 
It's just amazing. Do you guys remember when when uh, when he went to AEW and Granny could not figure out that Dean Ambrose and John Moxley were the same person? Yep. She just could not believe that it was true. And you go back and watch it, and it's like it's the same Roman, it's the same Seth, and then there's this fella, this wacky guy, and you know he works fine, but he's so wacky and he's so not John Moxley. And he's so much better today than he was back then, and for, like in everything, in every conceivable way. So, well, now you can clearly see that he was doing the WWE style. Of course, oh, he's not was. what he wanted to do, and now he gets a chance to, you know. Did he do the wacky line in this match? The wacky line? Yeah, the thing where you you go back in the ropes and then you come back. Yeah, uh, uh, the rebound no. close line. He did get kicked in the head and folded like an accordion and then fell out of the ring. Yeah. But no, he did not bounce off the ropes, I don't think. He used, he used to do that thing, and, and uh, apparently like that was what they called it in the back. They called it the wacky line. And uh, one of the announcers must have heard it because that ended up being what it was called on television, and it was never supposed to be. Didn't he but, steal it from uh, Nigel? Nigel used to do it too, yeah. Yeah. Yes. But anyway. Other than that, it was just like a great match. It was better than I, than I remembered. Like, I never thought the match was bad, but, you know, when it was over, I'm pretty sure when it originally happened, it was like, that was a great match. But then people are talking about, like, five stars and one of the best matches in WWE history. And I was like, it wasn't that bad, or it wasn't that good. And then I went back and watched it, and it still wasn't that good, but it was better than I remembered. It was a good match. Uh, Since we're talking about Bray, this is my favorite era of Bray, where he's kind of the Southern cult leader and... And um, actually, I kind of liked him as Husky Harris too. But uh, this was my this was my favorite Bray, and uh, he just had a, a presence about him. Um, and and the Shield is was awesome, and uh, this was um, uh, what month was this in February? Okay, so they're right about to go to WrestleMania 30, which uh, was in New Orleans, and that was the year that. That uh, that band played Bray to the uh, the ring. Remember Bray? I forget the name of the band, but yeah, yeah, same. But um, yeah, this is my favorite era of Bray. My favorite line out of this show was uh, Lawler. Believe it or not, when he was talking about Roman Reigns, he says, "This Roman might be unbeatable." I'll hold on to that one, I guess. Wow. Yeah, especially because the end of the match is Bray Wyatt hitting Roman Reigns with his finish, and he pins Roman Reigns. Right. And, like, that was weird. You know, I mean, they, they obviously saw something in Roman. They were protecting him and everything like that. But still, he did the job here. And uh, we have not seen Roman Reigns. I guess we saw him do the job to Jey Uso. But, you know, prior to that, it had been years. And so watching this match, and it's just hot tag, comeback, big moves, breaks down, boom, boom, boom. Bray White grabs the guy, hits the move, pins him. I was like, holy shit, he pinned Roman Reigns. Wow, good for you, buddy. I love the very first part of the match. Uh, Seth is just running wild, doing flip dives. He's in and out of the ring. Uh, and and Bray catches him, he slams him, and then hits him with a fat-ass senton on the floor. And the, the match ground to a halt. Grab a hold. I was thinking, man, Buddy Wayne would have loved this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I enjoyed it. I mean, it was ten minutes of just beating ass. There was no hot tags, no, no, uh, no, really, uh, any psychology at this point. It was just ten minutes of these guys just tagging in and out, beating each other's asses, and then Rollins got to work and uh, just started getting his ass kicked for like four minutes. And yeah, I thought it was great. I didn't even notice the cuts that you're talking about, probably because I had been watching a lot of the modern stuff as well, so it wasn't. Qu- Dude, watch the very beginning of the match when there's a there's a beating in the corner. I don't need to rewatch it, like, but I'm <laughs> yes, I already watched enough wrestling. But jeez, um, I mean, this was for me like in my life. I was not watching wrestling at this point because I had moved over to the East Coast. So no wrestling over there on the East Coast. No, this was a pay per view, and so I was out there by myself, I and see. I wasn't buying these shows, and and I didn't really get to experience the Shield at all in any of this era. Hmm. So like some of this points where I was I was kind of like fast forwarding through the matches to kind of see what else is on the show. You also have the New Age Outlaws versus the Usos. Wow. Which spans everything. <laughs> New Age Outlaws versus the Usos. Road Dog and Badass Billy wow. Gunn versus the Usos. 
Gun rolled up Jimmy Uso. New Age Outlaws kept the tag team titles. Dill here goes, look at where the Shield ended up. Roman's undefeated champ. Seth is a secondary champion in WWE. Moxley's a secondary champion in AEW. Yep, all right now. That's amazing. Yep. Dave Meltzer gave this match four and two and a two and a half stars. Four and two and a half? Or That's four and a half? Four and four point two five. Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Okay. Well, that's I wrote, fair. I, I wrote down 0.25, and so it, it confused me. I, I, I can I can see that. I'd say four and a quarter, maybe four and a half. It was really good at the end. The last couple last couple oh, yeah. minutes were great. Yeah, yeah. The false, the false, the near falls, and everything really set the uh, set for the finish. It set up the finish very well. I was surprised that Ambrose didn't come back. No, he did not. He After crawled Wyatt, into the crowd, yeah, and that was it. Beat his ass, and then Wyatt came back, and Ambrose was gone. And that was it. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.